Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Brother Jason did say that uh, Brother Gene will be speaking about the confirming the souls of the disciples is what he's going to concentrate on. But I wanted to bring to remembrance a couple of different events and uh, things that happened during the 13th and 14th chapter of Acts to kind of give us some background before he comes. Mm -hmm. In Antioch, the Holy Spirit called out Barnabas and Paul to preach the word of God. Now, in the cities, they would go to the synagogues to speak and to have a hearing there. Mm -hmm. Acts 13.32 says, And we declare to you glad tidings, that promise which was made to the fathers. This is what, what he went to speak about every time. Sometimes their listeners were attentive, but sometimes they met with opposition. In Paphos, a proconsul named Sergius Paulus was eager to hear Paul's message. But a sorcerer named Bar-Jesus tried to turn him away and keep him from the faith. Paul boldly faced this intruder head on, calling him a son of the devil and caused blindness to come over him. Paul would not allow anyone or anything to interfere with the word being preached. But in the end, this proconsul did believe as a result of this incident and the preaching of the gospel. The apostles did not let this opposition deter them, though, at all from preaching the message of Christ. In fact, these trials were considered joy for suffering for Christ, is how they looked at it. In Iconium, they preached in the synagogue, and a great number of people believed, Jews and Greeks both. But then the unbelieving Jews there stirred them up against them and corrupted their thinking about, about the truth. Because of this, Paul stayed there a long time, though, preaching and teaching and doing signs and wonders to strengthen the believers. In Lystra, Paul healed a man who had been crippled since birth, which opened the way to further preaching and teaching there, although not without fierce persecution. And it came to the point of stoning and Paul being left for dead. But the Lord restored him, we know, to continue preaching. He went back into that city, and then he also traveled to Derby as well. God provides for his chosen vessels, enabling them to accomplish his will in whatever Amen. circumstance. So I'm going to read Brother Gene's text here from Acts 14, 21 through 23. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. Thank you, sister, my dear one. These good things uh, to which we refer this morning in our theme, that which every joint supplies, that's the theme of our meeting, uh, we're plugging into, we might say, uh, that which is recorded. This is, this is the only time we would do this in this series uh, from the book of Acts. This, this message from the book of Acts is the only one that's in this series, that whichever joint supplies with the focus of confirming the souls of the disciples. The apostles went out very aggressively without fear as they were directed by the Lord. Now these things, as, as Sister Debbie mentioned, it was the Holy Spirit that directed, that guided, that stirred not that they were afraid it's just that they were busy <laughs> they were already in the work there in antioch and they did not shrink from that they were not uh, uh lackadaisical we could we should say uh they were devoted uh extremely devoted in prayer and fasting uh to this work to which god had called them we're talking about barnabas and, and saul or paul at this point They'd been there for some time with a number, were given a list of a number of other preachers and teachers who were giving themselves to this work there in Antioch of Syria. We've got the two Antiochs, remember, and both of them are in this, in this, uh, these texts that we've mentioned this morning in Acts 13 and 14, Antioch of Syria and Antioch of Pisidia, Antioch, Iconium, Lister, and Derby. And so they were busy there in Syria, very devoted, very focused upon the work. Uh, not just relaxing, not just content, they were aggressively pursuing the uh, increase and the maturity of the believers. That's what they were doing there. The record says there in Acts 13 that it was, uh, where's my, 
There we go. There were in that church at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. Mm -hmm. Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, which has been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. See, they were, they were uh, busily and deeply involved in the work there. Involved in their part in the body of Christ, speaking the truth in love. We make several references here to Ephesians 4. This is critical for us to understand, I think. I want to make this point, and I'll probably make it several times. Is that these words that the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians 4, he was engaged in them long before he wrote them down, wasn't he? That's right. That's right. Amen. They were written, they're, they're, they're true not because they're written in Scripture, but they're written in Scripture because they're true. They, were, they had already taken hold of these things and were, were, as I said, deeply involved and pressing forward in this good work to which God had uh, called them and ordained them as preachers and teachers of his truth, his truth. They knew that this was God's truth. Uh, the Apostle Paul and Barnabas for, for years at this point in chapter at the beginning of their what we call their first missionary journey <laughs> their first trip their first travels they had already been engaged in these things for years they had traveled uh, Paul had began in Damascus he'd been down to Jerusalem he'd been back to Tarsus he'd come back to uh, then Barnabas brought him to Antioch then they went down to Jerusalem now they're back in Antioch how many years have gone by well we don't know for sure the book of Acts is not a calendar but it's been some time that they've been deeply devoted to these things, yeah. Amen. declaring to the believers the whole counsel of God, speaking the truth in love. That's what they were doing. They'd been involved in this Amen. for some time. They knew that from him, the whole body, from Christ, as, as, they, were, as they were joined together with him, they already knew. And the body was already increasing there in Antioch on every level. They, they, had preached the, uh, they had preached this message to the believers in cities, preached this gospel, and this work was moving forward and, and producing and increasing there in Antioch as they engaged these things. And so as they did these things then, as they were busy in the work, then they were positioned, see, and ready. Then the Holy Spirit directed them further. Isn't it amazing to think about that their departure from the brethren in Antioch was an increase? Yeah. Only in the kingdom of God. A lot of people would call that a subtraction. Oh, we lost them. Oh, oh, I just hate that they're leaving. You know, no, that was not the attitude at all. This was increase. This was the work of God continuing to expand and get larger and larger. And since this was by the Holy Spirit, we need to recognize, and I want to point this out, this was not a result of a humanly devised organizational plan, some kind of methodology or system that was developed by a, by a, a council of experts after extensive investigation and research and so forth. Not so. God had already done the research, okay, <laughs> if you want to say it that way. He'd already made the plans. He already saw a far off. And now he was just enacting these things with these willing believers, mm -hmm. these who were willing in the day of his power. Yeah. He was integrating them into yes. what he had uh, enacted among them. They were engaging these things now with their whole hearts, declaring the things that uh, had been made known, things that had been revealed from ages past, they were now fulfilled. And this is what Sister Debbie cited to you, that they declared there in the synagogue in Antioch. These things we declare to you that God promised and he has now done. He has now accomplished these things. So, 
The body of Christ was alive and active. It was increasing in strength and stability and general health of their hearts and minds in the image of him who animates his own body. <laughs> it was the Lord who was animating all of these things. It was him who was seated at the right hand of his father, who was directing his people in all of these things, his, his, uh, his servants, his chosen witnesses. So these things occurred long before uh, Paul wrote the words of our theme, that which every joint supplieth. God's Spirit granted, it, granted them these things and engaged them in these things in their work there in Syria, on Cyprus, in uh, Perga, and Pisidia. These are the areas where they traveled from Antioch of Syria. It was, I would say, spiritually natural then for them to return to each of these places. They ended at Derby, name familiar to us, huh? Timothy, Eunice, this godly grandmother and mother. Remember those names there in Derby? Then they returned after, after, after Paul was stoned and left for dead. He got up, went back into the city, and they returned to each of those places where they had met hostility, where they had met trouble. They returned to those places and to their brethren. Amen. They did not adhere to the fairly contemporary idea. It depends on how old you are as to how contemporary it is, but I remember hearing this many, many years ago. None should hear twice until all have heard once. Huh. That was the standard seat to get them out there shaking the bushes and, and winning the lost. Like the Lord said in the Great Commission, those kinds of, see that kind of language, none should hear twice until all have heard once. That sounds, well, I don't know whether some would think it sounds noble. But the apostles didn't hear that. That was not their philosophy of ministry, if you want to say it that way. It was not their view of these things of revelation, by the way, of apostolic revelation. It was not part of that. So it was certainly not part of their understanding, nor was it part of their practice, was it? No. They immediately turned and went back to the same places. You suppose they were trying to pick up the ones they missed? No, they weren't trying to pick up the ones they missed. Now, they were glad, of course. They would certainly speak to any willing ears, any that were interested, just as Paul found them there in the marketplace in Athens later. Well, certainly he was willing to speak to them. He discussed with them daily, didn't he? That it, it was his practice to speak to anyone that was willing to engage him in these things about the truth and the will and the purpose of God. Even if they were, like the Athenians, totally ignorant. They didn't know the God. You know, he was, he was drawn to the synagogue first where they at least knew God, had some, uh, some basic foundational understanding, but he was willing. So he was willing, he was, but his interest was focused on those who had this devotion Amen. and commitment to the Savior. Yeah. They had heard this truth and they had embraced it. They'd taken hold of it, even in the midst of trouble. And persecution, which they found, Paul and Barnabas found it everywhere they went. Trouble and persecution. First in the synagogues, didn't they? <laughs> they were jealous at the, the crowds that gathered there in Antioch of Pisidia. The Jews in the synagogue were jealous. Well, they didn't come to hear us, did they? They never came like this. Who do these, you, you know that leader that said, brothers, if you have some encouragement, for this, please stand up and speak. He had no idea what he was getting into. When he invited Paul to stand up and yeah. speak there in the, in the synagogue in Antioch, did he? Not a clue. Boy, the, you see, you wonder if they took him out in the street and beat him. Like the, like the uh, people in Corinth did one of their leaders. Drug him out in the street. One of the leaders of the synagogue. He was drug out in the street and beaten in front of the, uh, in front of the courthouse there. Because he's the one, likely, and we don't have the details that we do here in, in uh, Antioch of, of Pisidia. But uh, 
it's likely that this man was the one in Corinth that allowed the Apostle Paul to speak. Let him get up in the first place. You're the one that you, you should have checked him out before you let him speak. And so, because he caused so much uproar by declaring these things. Declaring these things that God had promised and had certainly then accomplished. I want to turn again to this, to this text and get the words. We declare unto you glad tidings how that the promise which was made unto the fathers God hath fulfilled unto us his children. Now that was the focus of his message there in the synagogue in Antioch of Pisidia. And you know it was in other places as well. So, 1421, Luke records this. I'll read it again. And when they had preached the gospel of that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples. Now that's our consideration, that phrase right there, that's our consideration this morning, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Now the truth is, Paul and Barnabas were not the first ones to give attention to this common faith that they had, to give further attention to it. Let me remind you of these words. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, right. and in the breaking of bread and in prayer. You remember the reference to that. Amen. That's Acts 2.42. That's right at the beginning. That's in the first few weeks after Pentecost in Jerusalem. They continued steadfastly. Yes. It means the same thing. Amen. Practically speaking, the effect is the same thing, see. They gave themselves, these believers, it was not just the apostles, it was all of them together. Yeah. We're talking at least three, likely more than 3,000 by the time this was written. <laughs> by the time this was recorded or, or these events took place, 3,000 that day. 3,000, and they continued steadfastly, all of them together yeah. in one place. They continued steadfastly in these things that had been made known to them. For you see, brethren, they recognized as, as devout Jews from every nation under heaven. That's how Luke described them, didn't he? Mm -hmm. They understood that these things of God were much, much larger much more expansive than what they first appeared. Mm -hmm. yes, amen. Amen. They, they valued these things. They treasured these things. They believed that God had fulfilled the promises that he made. God kept his promises. He is the promise keeper, you see. Yeah. They saw that. They had a library of revelation from God. From Moses and the Psalms and the prophets. And so they just continued to probe these things in the light then, in the light of him who said, I am the light of the world. See, the apostles would say, the master said. I remember the day when the master said, see. And then they'd expand that and pull in statements from Ezekiel, from Jeremiah, from David, from some of the unknown writers, mm -hmm. we're, you know, like for instance, we're not sure who wrote 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, but there would be statements there that they could refer to. Right. See. Others are the prophets from Micah to Habakkuk to Zephaniah. They could draw in, see, all of these words yeah. that God had said he was going to do and he has, he has fulfilled these things, see. So look how marvelous this is that God has said this Amen. in the days of the prophet and here we are living in them. They, ju they, they, they just marveled at those things. I'm certain that they did. They just marveled at those precious and good things. And later they continued. This practice, I mean, this practice. I'm still in my introduction, by the way. This practice, Paul and Barnabas continued in Antioch. Not the second Antioch, 
This is the first Antioch. This is the Antioch that they were sent out from. They went back then. This was after the Jerusalem Council. How much time had gone by? A good amount of time had gone by. They continued in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others. And some days after, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren. Well, he doesn't say anything about taking the message to the lost, does he? He says, let's go and visit our brethren. So see, this was, this was their common practice right from the beginning. Amen. It continued then as the message went out, as they were directed by the Holy Spirit to go out and preach as they did there in Cyprus and Pergamum and Pisidia. They went back to Jerusalem. They returned back to Antioch after the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15, and they were continuing to do these things, to meet with the brethren there in Antioch, teaching and preaching. Mm -hmm. For these under-shepherds knew that the great shepherd of the sheep cared about his sheep. Certainly he cared about gathering more in, but he also cared about caring for whom he had. He watched over his flock. He was not going to allow predators to come in and take them away. He was not going to allow some who lagged or whose attention was distracted over at the edges. He was not going to allow them to be distracted completely. But he would call them back again. Get back, get back over here now. Give me your attention. Pay attention. We're, we're going this way. We're going, the shepherd would say, we're going this way. Watch. Hey, hey, over there. Get back in line. We're going this way. Yes. We're going to turn up here. If you're not paying attention, we'll turn and you'll all, you know, you'll turn around and we'll be gone. <laughs> because we're moving forward. See, that's the image that you need to see. The shepherds out front leading. They didn't drive the sheep in those days. They all knew that, didn't they? The shepherd didn't drive the sheep. He led the sheep and they heard his voice and followed him and would not hear the voice of another see that's all involved in this confirming the souls of the disciples yes. Amen. these images are all part of this so now as they returned to derby and lystra iconium or from derby to lystra iconium and antioch of pisidia doing this confirming they were doing this confirming of the souls of the disciples. Let me remind you again of this one prominent name who was involved in this and who benefited. And we still benefit from the confirmation that was given to him, that is, our brother Timothy. I'm preaching through that. His first letter at work right now have been for uh, about five weeks. <laughs> we just began the sixth chapter. Every day for five weeks. Could have spent more time, but I didn't want to drag it out. <laughs> Timothy, he was hearing these things. That Paul and Barnabas would teach and preach the believers to confirm their souls. And of course, when he returned again to visit the brethren, that he said there that Luke records in Acts 15, let's go back again and visit the brethren. What did he find? He found that young Timothy took these things serious. Yes. Yeah. He found that young Timothy devoted himself to the work of the Lord. He had matured. He had increased. He himself, Timothy, had been stable. He had continued to hunger and thirst for these things so that the believer said, that Timothy, he is, he is quite a young man. Paul did say years later, let no one look down on your youth. So this commend he was commended, Timothy. You remember, he was commended by the believers there in Derby. And Paul wanted to take him with him. My goodness. Paul wanted to take him with him. Timothy didn't volunteer. Paul recruited him because of the reputation that he had among the believers there because Timothy responded in faith. 
and took hold of that for which he was taken hold of. He apprehended that for which he was apprehended, didn't he? So that when Paul and Silas then returned to Derby some time later, we don't, we don't know how long it was, but it was long enough for Timothy to mature to where he was ripe and ready. He was a young man that Paul could send him here, send him there. He could leave him here or there. I left you in Ephesus. That you might command certain men. He could leave him in Philippi. He could leave him in Thessalonica or Berea. From Athens, he could send him back to Thessalonica with letters. Receive a report to him. This, see, this is the kind of, this is the body working, brethren. This is that which every joint supplies. It's a leadership part, true. And that's not the only part, but it is part. See? Timothy, grandmother Lois, and his mother Eunice. Remember those names, huh? The confirmation was a great benefit. This confirmation. And we still benefit from that. So, let's think together then. Very, I'm afraid, somewhat briefly. There's a lot of truth in this phrase here. Confirming the souls of the disciples. There's a sense in which we could say, well, we've got to say it. Everything Paul wrote was calculated to this, Amen. wasn't it? Yes. Amen. Whether you're talking about his first two letters to the Thessalonians, which we think may possibly have been the first ones. Could have been Galatians. There's debate, you know, did he write to the churches in Galatia first? Or was he over in Thessalonica? Uh, did he write from that area to the churches in Galatia, having heard what was happening there? There's some debate about that. It doesn't really matter for our purposes. Amen. He was confirming the souls of the disciples. Or writing from Rome while he was under arrest there for that two-year period when he wrote to the Philippians, to the Colossians, and Philemon, mm -hmm. and finally to the Ephesians. All of these were for confirming the souls of the disciples from, pardon me, from a different perspective. He was not writing a letter to the newspaper in Philippi appealing to people to believe the gospel that they would remember that he preached. Not at all. <laughs> he wrote to the believers. He wrote to the believers, corrected them, instructed them, and trained them even as he would later write that that was the purpose of Scripture. And he wasn't, he wasn't necessarily speaking about his own writings, but we consider that part of his writings, don't we? <laughs> they, in, they, they instruct us and correct us and train us in righteousness. His writings do that. Well, he was referring to the writings of Moses and David and Isaiah and Malachi. He was referring to their writings primarily. Although... Paul knew he was writing scripture, didn't he? He told the Corinthians, what I say to you, what I write to you is from the Lord. Yeah. You judge this. This is from the Lord. Amen. That which I received from the Lord, I deliver now unto you. Yeah. So he knew he was writing. More than just a personal letter. We, we call it a letter, but it was more than that. Yes, it was. Amen. And I remind you that Peter considered Paul's writings more than personal letters also, didn't he? Yeah, sure did. The apostle Peter, that some call the prince of the church, he pointed to Paul's writings and said that. So let's talk about, uh, very briefly here, just a, a, a dictionary definition, confirming, to confirm. Confirming, to support further or to reestablish, to confirm or strengthen one a broad definition. It, it actually comes from two words. It's a compound word. And the primary one is to set fast mm -hmm. so that it will not move. Get the idea? Yeah. The yeah. souls of the disciples set fast yeah. so they do not move yeah. because the winds and the waves are going to descend upon us. The storms and the rains of life will come down upon his people. 
course, those storms and winds and rains are God's employees, and ours as well, who are designed to assist us, to hang on. <laughs> I thought, of, I can't remember whether it was Brother Mike or Brother Given last night, that a couple of different phrases that they mentioned reminded me of this other phrase from Hebrews, anchor our soul. Yeah. Anchor our soul, see, so you won't move. Stead fast, set fast. That is to turn resolutely in a certain direction. This is confirming. That's see, right. Amen. get your get your eyes set and focused. Now, whatever your hand finds to do, do it. Because see, you're focused, confirming the souls of the disciples. Steadfastly set and strengthened. This word's used three other times in the book of Acts. Three other times beside our primary text in 4, 14.22. In 15.32 it says, in Antioch, again in, in Antioch of Pisidia, I'm sorry, Antioch of Pisidia, the first Antioch, where Paul and Barnabas had preached and teached and taught. They went down to the conference in Jerusalem and returned with Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, this is Acts 15, 32, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. So keep in mind that the uh, basic definition of that word, steadfastly, firmly set, turned resolutely in a certain direction. That's in 1532. Then in verses 40 and 41 of chapter 15, it says, Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren under the grace of God. He went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. See, that was his focus. As he traveled, see, they're, they're, they're beginning to travel now to see how the brethren are. Yeah. And as he traveled, this would have been east of Galatia and into Galatia, into the Galatian and Cilician region. We don't know how many churches there were, but they're going there confirming the churches. And then in 1823, years later, we're not certain how many years, after he had spent some time there, he departed. This is in Antioch again, Antioch of Syria. He departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. Same word. Same word. So, this is what he engaged in, confirming the souls of the disciples. Confirming the soul. The soul is, is, is one half of our unseen part. There's three parts to us, body, so, spirit, soul, and body. The soul is one half of that unseen part, spirit and soul. So that confirming the soul, that soul, of course, is what's tossed here and there. Or attempted to be tossed here and there, I should say. And so it needs to be uh, strengthened and directed. Not by forms and structures and uh, some type of systematic order or methodology. There are groups among us who have a ritual that they call a confirmation. Yeah. It's a series of classes and teachings that a person, a young person primarily, what it comes down to <laughs> is a Christian bar mitzvah, okay? For boys and girls, 11, 12, 13 years old. And they go through this series of lessons and they give all the right answers and ah, you're confirmed. Yeah. You're confirmed. Mm. Now you're ready, see? Now, there's other things involved in it than that, but they've made it into a ritual is what they've done. I know I handle some of the material at this time of year. We're just, we're just poised at work to receive the confirmation communion cards for the first time communion. After, after you're confirmed, then you take communion for the first time. The, the uh, high church groups, we might call them, are, are involved in these kinds of things. But this action involves the inner man. It has nothing to do with, you're 12 years old now, it's time for you to go through confirmation and have your first communion. No, not at all. 
This involves the inner man. Amen. It involves maturity and strength Amen. in the inner man. As the Apostle Paul said that he prayed for the believers there in Ephesus, that he would grant you according the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend. See, that's the focus of these things, of this work of confirming the believers. They exhorted them to continue in the faith. See, that's what was involved when they confirmed them. Continue in the faith. The master said that his people would take up their cross daily. Yeah. His disciples would take up their cross daily and follow after him. That they would bring forth fruit with patience. That's what he said that they would do. That's not a commandment. Although he did command that, it's not that, it's not that kind of a commandment of taking up the cross. And this bearing fruit with patience was not a commandment at all. It was a revelation of life in those who walked by faith, walked in the light, walked in the spirit. They will, they will bear fruit with patience. It was actually an interpretation of one of the parables, wasn't it? They will bear fruit with patience. See, he told them what that meant. Faith has no autopilot, brethren. It must be taken hold of actively as the wind buffets, as the rain comes down and drenches you, as all kinds of things afflict us and pour in from every direction, we're hanging on. See, Amen. actively engaged, Amen. interacting with the master, Amen. our savior, as he directs our bark. From this realm into the next. And this process confirms us that we would continue in the things in which which we began. This faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. We're continuing in it. See? Continue in the faith. Paul wrote to the Philippians that your love may abound yet more and more. Increase. See? Production. More and more in knowledge and judgment that ye may approve the things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense don't want to offend the Lord, Amen. offend your Savior, don't want to offend the angels. Amen. Remember Herod offended that angel? Too bad for Herod. Mm. Yeah. Over a period of days, he died very slowly and very painfully for offending an angel. Mm -hmm. No offense, have no offense, till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness. Mm -hmm. See, that's the effect of this confirmation. The apostles knew that not all the believers continued in the faith. Not everyone will. Some will spring up quickly but fall to temptation. Others will be choked by the riches and pleasures of life. And they won't bring any fruit to perfection. But continuing in the faith strengthens. By that we put on the whole armor, the helmet, the breastplate, the belt, the sandals, the shield, the sword. We put it all on and we move forward. Ag aggressive move forward. This, these are not defensive. This is not defensive armament. It's for moving forward. It's to protect you as you progress in these things. And the, the, the apostles warned them of trouble in the world. Of course, they didn't have to do much warning about that, did they? You remember, Paul would later say to the Thessalonians, as you have experienced, we, we told you this would come, and it has come to pass on you. He said, and you saw it in us. You saw it in us. The believers there in, in uh, uh, the cities of Antioch and Iconium, Lystra and Derbe, they saw it in Paul, didn't they? Dragged out of the city and stoned and left for dead Amen. there in Lystra. And that was after he performed a miracle. Thank you, Paul. 
Get a hold of him. Don't let him, don't let him escape. We don't care if he healed that lame man. Drag him over here. Let him have it. That's the thanks he got. But, of course, Paul had the attitude, my life means nothing. Amen. Only that I may complete the ministry Amen. that he has given yeah. to me. And a central part of it is this confirming. Because as an apostle, he was given to the church, wasn't he? Yeah. Amen. yeah. To equip them, to strengthen them, to make them stable by teaching them everything whatsoever the master had commanded. That was his assignment. And that's what he did. The Lord had said, in this world you shall have tribulation. He told Timothy, he, re he reminded, I should say, he reminded, Timothy saw a lot of this himself, and he reminded him at the end, in his last letter, Paul said, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But the Lord delivered me out of them all. Of course, now he's telling Timothy, I've come to the end. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Amen. But the Lord delivered me out of all so that I could come to this place now. Amen. Come and bring my cloak, Timothy. Yeah. And don't forget the parchments, the scrolls that I left. Bring those to me. And, and also, Timothy, bring Mark with you. Think of that. Yeah. Bring Mark. Remember, Mark had left them yeah. when they were traveling to Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. Mark left them, went back to Jerusalem in fear. But Paul received him back later. They designated spiritual leadership among the believers. They themselves being among that number, they would teach others who would also deliver this message. These are words that Paul told to Timothy. The things you heard from me in the presence of many witnesses also deliver to other men who will teach others. See, this is all part of that confirmation, brethren. All part of that. God set some in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers. He wrote to Titus, I left you in Crete, that you should set in order things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. Of course, this work of, this leadership work was a good work. That's how he described it to Timothy, a good work. He desires a good work. Any man desires to do this. They prayed, they fasted, they commended them to the Lord. This is what Jesus did to the apostles. Remember, in those days he went out to the mountain to pray, continued all night in prayer, and when it was day, he called to him his disciples, and of them he chose 12, whom he also named apostles. And, of course, these brethren who were ministering there in Antioch when the Holy Ghost said, set apart for me. So this is what they were doing. This was, this was their common practice, see? In this confirming of the souls, here's why they did it. Because saving faith is just the beginning. Yeah. You're born again. Yeah. You know, you all know that Mr. David and I have a new grandson. He's just born. We haven't seen him since last week. <laughs> Aaron and Barb saw a picture and said he's changed already. Why? Because he's alive. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> and when people are born, they're designed to grow, aren't they? And as they grow, they change. They change. Look around you at these teenagers who've been among us uh, for part of the 20 years that most of us have been together. <laughs> so these teenagers have been here most of that time. We remember when all of them were born, all of them that were here, we remember that. We took care of some of them that are teenagers now. We took care of some of them in our homes when they were little, didn't we? Some of us did. They're designed to grow, you see, and increase. They're designed to mature. This is how God has designed yeah. us here in the world and the body, hasn't he? Amen. Well, those words all fit the kingdom, don't they? Yes. They fit the body of Christ. And they fit all of us who were born again from above. It's, see, it's just the beginning. That's why this confirmation Needs to be done. We're saved and we're strengthened in that salvation. And the apostolic ministry continued in the believers. 
that they would walk this straight and narrow way, being attacked on this side and that side and from above and from below and, and every direction, but they would remain stable on that straight and narrow way. Why? Because they're confirmed and they're being confirmed. It's not confirmation, by the way, is not just an event either. Faith is not just an event. It does begin. Confirmation does begin as well. Once you enter in, then you begin to be confirmed and you continue to be confirmed. See? The oldest among us, or those of us who are older than many of you, <laughs> we're continuing to be confirmed. Though some of us have stood in public and spoken of these things for I, for one, for more than 40 years. We continue to be confirmed in these things and increase. There are times when we make leaps forward. Great. And we know, and we know we're making leaps forward. We understand that, 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 that we passed a milestone back there. Well, just right back there, boy, I remember this. And now look what's, see, you're able to say those kinds of things. Well, the apostle said those kinds of things in his writings to the believers. So they did this because faith it begins a process, also because the soul is unstable. And it needs to be strengthened. Early, early in the scriptures, we read of David writing about the instability of his own soul. And he, he had such insight. He had such a heart after God that he recognized and knew these things. Amen. So we need to be strengthened. Our enemy will not miss an opportunity to fire at us Amen. any particular time. And it doesn't matter how long you've walked. He'll find a place where he thinks, he thinks, that he'll get an opening. Mm -hmm. Now, he knows about the shield of faith and this breastplate of rights. He knows about that, but he's just hoping that he doesn't, he's not going to give up. <laughs> he's like a, a, a wild animal, a ravenous beast, okay? So he's not going to give up. He is relentless. He's much stronger than we. So it's a good thing that the armor we have is of the Lord, huh? It's not of our making. It's not something that we manufactured and generated. Because that wouldn't be strong enough. Yeah. All of this is part of confirmation. You've got to stay strong to stay in the ancient path, the straight and narrow. You need your attention. You've got to have power, see? That's what's involved in this confirmation. Your vision must be clear. Your hearing must be keen because we don't know the way. Remember Moses said that word, those words? To his brother-in-law, we don't know the way. You can show us that we don't know the way. Well, we do know that way and the one in whom is the way, but we don't know the precise steps one after the other. And so he's guiding us in those steps. We do know that we're walking in him. We do know that we're walking in the light. And he is leading us. So we're fixing our eyes. And we're sharpening our hearing that it will be keen and precise when he calls. When we hear him say, oh, not that way. Don't step there. You want to hear. You want to hear precisely. Oh, move, move, move just a little bit. Now forward. Oh, slow down a little bit. You know, you're still making progress. Sometimes when you're standing still, you're still making progress. You might say making progress. You're not losing ground. So you're still making progress in these things of pardon me, in these things of God. So they concern they confirmed the souls of the disciples by exhorting their hearts in the truth, by directing them to follow truly spiritual leaders, not figureheads, not managers of buildings and property. Not so. They had no buildings or property, did they? No, they didn't. There in Ephesus, Paul was teaching in a borrowed classroom for two years. They had no deed or title to the property. It was borrowed. But during that time, now how did this happen? Don't you have to have a building? For all of Asia to hear the word, don't you have to have your own property and building? Well, obviously not, do you? God's not dealing in real estate. Yeah. They are tools that he can use, so he uses them, disposes of them, and moves forward. And you better be ready to go. 
You better travel light, as they say. Amen. You better be ready to move forward when Amen. he's ready. Okay, so they exhorted the believers' hearts in the truth to follow truly spiritual leaders. When does this confirmation take place in closing? It takes place as we take up our cross. It takes place as we walk in the light, as we walk in the Spirit. It takes place as we, by the Spirit, crucify the flesh. It takes place as we sow to the Spirit, as we mind the things of the Spirit, as we, through the Spirit, obey the truth. This confirmation takes place. So, brethren, I exhort you then, yield yourself to being confirmed in this good truth by that which every joint supplies from the head. God's grace and peace. Thank you, brother. Amen.